Hey guys, just want to say welcome to our online worship experience today. I'm Pastor Stephen. I'm the online campus pastor here at Compassion Church, and we're so excited to have you uh, joining with us today. I want to let you know that uh, we're getting closer and closer to, uh, again, our regular meeting in person worship time and so we'll give you more details as that gets closer and uh, we just want you to be safe that's our number one priority right now but we are getting close to meeting again in person and i don't know about you but i've been missing that i've been missing all of your smiling faces so we'll give you some more details as the time gets uh, nearer i want you to do something for me speaking of of meeting together i want you to post in the comments section below your answer to this question what have you been missing the most about meeting in person uh, at, the, at our church location and worshiping together. What are you missing the most? And also tell us what you have enjoyed about the online experience that we've had over the past several weeks. We wanna hear from you. So engage with us and uh, post your answer down below. Say hello to one another, connect with each other. We wanna do all that we can to stay connected during this time. I wanna say to all of you that are faithful in your giving, we wanna say thank you. We are so uh, appreciative that you have been faithful through this time, and we can't thank you enough. Uh, easy ways to give, so remember that. Be faithful with your giving. We hope you have a, a, a incredible day today. We, we pray that you are blessed during this time. And so uh, we're going to get started with our service. We hope you enjoyed the worship and the word. God bless you. We'll see you a little bit later today.
guys, we want to thank you so much for joining us today at Compassion. Glad to have you in our service. Well, guys, it's been a long process. It's been a long, and I guess now over 45 days that we have been shelter in place because of COVID-19. Uh, well, as you know, if you're here in Texas, just recently uh, our governor has opened up our state in what we call phase one. And as a church, I want to let you know right here, you're the first to hear, that we are reopening Compassion Church next Sunday, May 10th, for Mother's Day. We are so excited. I probably hope that all throughout this broadcast right now, as I'm saying that, you and your family are cheering and you're excited and you can't wait. I can't wait. And uh, so next Sunday, Compassion Church will be reopening its doors to the community. Now, as we are in phase one, there are some criteria that we must meet and some things that we're going to do to keep you safe and to protect you. A couple of things is because of uh, the social distancing, we will be limited on space in the services next week. Uh, in fact, the way that it is is we'll be actually less than a third of our normal attendance because we will be two chairs apart. Uh, unless you are family, if you're immediate family, you come together, you will be able to sit together. But for those that are not, uh, it'll be at least two chairs apart because we want to social distance as much as we can. So to do that, we're actually adding another service next Sunday. We'll have 8.30, 10 o'clock, 11.30, 1 p.m. and 5.30 p.m. to give us, again, another service to bring more people in. So. What we need you to do to make sure that we have a certain amount in each service and don't go beyond our capacity according to uh, the guidelines of the state, what we're asking you to do is this. Uh, there is a link that is a part of this. If you'll go click on that link or sometime this week, go to the link on our Facebook page, you can go and register you and your family for what service you want to come to next Sunday. Now, we need you to do that because uh, we know services right now are filling up very quickly. So please go right now and you and rest are you and your whole family. Now, I also say that because in phase one, we will not be having children's church or nursery. Again, in phase one, we will not be offering children's church or nursery at Compassion Church during phase one. Now, your children are welcome to come. We'd love to see them. They'll just be sitting with you during the service, okay? So we're excited about that. So guys, do me a favor. Please go right now to that link and register for you and your family to be in the service next week. Now, uh, also, do us a favor. If you're not really, you don't care what time, we know that most of the time our 10 and 1130 are our most busiest service. We want to maybe to go to the 830, maybe 1 p.m., or maybe the 530 p.m. Another thing is, is we, we know uh, for those, there are certain groups that are more vulnerable during this time. And we understand if, if you're not wanting to come to service to be safe, we get that and, and we applaud you for wanting to keep your safe, yourself safe and protect you. Now, if some of you do want to come and saying, well, I know I fit within that vulnerable stage, but I still want to come to service, that's fine. We're asking you to come to that 830 service. We have geared that service more to the more vulnerable and more of the elderly crowd to keep them safe. We'll be doing special things in that service to protect you. Also, one thing we'll be doing is, is to, to, to begin to make sure that you are safe when you come. Uh, all of our staff and all of our volunteers, when you enter the building, you will notice they're wearing masks and they're wearing gloves. We're doing that, guys, because we want to keep you safe and protect you. We'll also be opening all doors. No one would open doors at Compassion next week and during phase one because we want to keep you safe. Uh, we will have throughout the church uh, hand sanitizer. Another thing we'll be doing is, is between and before and after every service, we'll be disinfecting the whole church to make sure that we are keeping you protected and keeping you safe. Okay? So, guys, we have a lot of protocols that we will have in place when you arrive next Sunday. Now, we can't make you wear a mask. We would prefer you to, but we can't make it. But far as our staff and our volunteers, they will be wearing masks. They will have on gloves. They will be washing their hands uh, throughout the day. And we will be doing everything we can to keep you safe and to keep you protected when you arrive back at Compassion Church next Sunday. So do me a favor. Go right now or go after the service and go and register for what service you're coming to. Remember, 8.30, 10 o'clock, 11.30, 
1 p.m. and 5.30 p.m. Five services next Sunday and through phase one as we're coming back to services at Compassion Church. Well, guys, we can't wait to see you. I want to get into my sermon today. For the last few weeks, we've been talking about the devil's dictionary. Those words that the devil loves to use to bring havoc in the lives of not only the world, but even men and women of God. You know, the first week I talked about if. Oh, that if is a powerful word that the devil loves to use to begin to bring doubts and worries and fears in your life. Last week, we talked about always. The devil loves to begin to put in your mind that things will always be this way. Things will always be done this way. I'll always be like this and I'll never change. And it's a lie of the devil. Well, there's a word that I want to use today. And I think it's one of the greatest words that the devil uses to bring havoc and chaos in the lives of not only the world, but in the lives of men and women of God. And that word is assume. Assume. You know, my, the church, you guys have heard me talk about this. In fact, me and my wife talked about this week in our life. I have a tendency to be a little bit analytical. I, I kind of read between the lines. In fact, I tell people normally when I'm having a conversation with you, there are two conversations going on, what you're saying, but what I think you're saying. And um, I can be honest, sometimes it's got me in trouble because I assume someone has an ulterior motive in what they're, and why they're doing what they're doing. Sometimes it can make me doubt individuals because I'm reading into the conversation things that I shouldn't read into. See, assumption becomes the tool of the devil to make you not focus on what God is doing, but what the devil wants you to believe is happening. And today I want to share just three simple things when it comes to assumptions and assuming in your life. To, to do that, I want to read a passage today. It's out of Acts chapter 2, verse 14 through 16. And it says this, Then Peter stood up with the eleven raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It is only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In this passage here in Acts chapter 2, most of you know this. You've read it for yourself. It's the day of Pentecost. They've been in the upper room, and the power of the Holy Spirit began to fall in the room. And as the Holy Spirit began to fill that room at that moment, the Bible says that they began to speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit enabled them. Tongues of fire fell upon them. And the Bible tells us that there was a crowd around, and as a crowd was there that day and began to hear this and see this happening, well, the crowd thought they were probably drunk that this is craziness. What is in the world is going on? In fact, what happened is the crowd began to assume the worst. At that moment, Peter stands up. He said, guys, and let me paraphrase. He begins to say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Listen, I know what you're assuming. I know what your assumptions are. You think we're drunk. And I love what he says. He says, it's 9 o'clock in the morning. Do you really think we're drunk? Then he goes on there and he says, listen, the prophet Joel prophesied this. He goes on to say later in the verse that he said, that, in other words, one day I shall pour out my spirit upon, upon men and women and young and old. And as he begins to say this, he begins to have an opportunity to address the assumptions of the crowd. Today, from this moment of Peter addressing the assumptions of the crowd, I want to talk about the assumptions of of us as men and women of God, that I want to try to help you to overcome, to, to live that life that God has called you to live. The, the first thing I want to share with you today is this. Don't assume without the facts. Don't assume without the facts. You know what Peter said? He said to them at that moment, because here's what they thought in Acts chapter 2, verse 12 and 13, it says this, amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. 
See, at this moment, their assumptions are that they're drunk. Or some of them just didn't understand what was going on. And because of that frustration, they begin to make up other scenarios in their mind. So many times the reason why we allow assumptions to take over our life is that we don't know the facts. We jump to conclusions. Most of us as men and women of God, well, we're not very patient. Uh, in a microwave world where we can have everything at the touch of our hands, even right now, as you are watching me, years and years ago, this would not have been feasible to think that I could begin to reach people all around the world. Through our broadcast, I think last month we had, or last week we had more than 10 uh, states that were watching us. We had people from Japan that were watching us. Years ago, this was not even feasible. And because we have now this technology, this capability, we want things done like that. But see, the problem is, that's what assumption lives on. Jumping to conclusions. Not knowing all the facts. Remember what Peter said? What Peter said to them was this. It's 9 a.m. We're not drunk. In other words, he laid out a fact. The fact is, what you're thinking you know is not possible. See, many times assumptions will even begin to narrow out and do away with the logical way of thinking. We'll start believing things that are almost impossible. We'll start allowing doubts and fears and worries to fill our minds because we'd rather run with assumption than listen to the facts. Can I say something to you today? Men and women of God, stop jumping to conclusions. Stop assuming the worst. As men and women of God, let's learn when something happens that we don't understand, that is taking a moment for us to grasp a hold of. What we do is instead of allowing the devil to use assumption to lead us down the wrong path, let's listen to the facts. Let's stop for a moment and begin to understand what's taking place. It says, and I love this passage, it says that for us many times that in Acts chapter verse 14, then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd, fellow Jews, and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain. Can I say that to you today? It's something so important. Peter was saying, before you let your assumptions run wild with you, let me explain. We need to learn the same thing. Before we jump to conclusions, accept the assumptions that are running through our minds. What we need to do is we need to stop for a moment and let God, through facts, explain to us the truth. Because if not, those assumptions will run wild with us. If not, those assumptions will lead us down paths we don't need to go down. It says in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 2, Fools find no pleasure in understanding, but delight in airing their own opinions. How many times have you been a fool? How many times have you lacked understanding? How many times that you got a little nugget of something and there was really no truth to it at all, but your mind ran wild with you and the devil jumped in? You know, the Bible says that we're to take all of our thoughts to the obedience of Christ Jesus. Why? Because our thoughts, if led by assumption, will begin to run wild and the devil will grab a hold of those thoughts and lead us down a path that will lead us away from God's truth and down the lies of the enemy's desire to draw you away from God. I love that. Fools find no pleasure in understanding. We need to learn, first of all, before we just assume, know all the facts. Next, I want you to write this down. Don't assume without your faith. Don't assume without your faith. In Acts, 12, Acts chapter 2, 15, it says this. No, this was what was spoken by the prophet Joel. See, most of those that were in that crowd that day that were watching, uh, their faith, uh, not the Christian faith, but the, the Jewish faith, the Hebrew faith, they had most likely and should have known these prophecies spoken by Joel. If they had been living the faith, living according to the Word of God, walking in a relationship with God, when these men and these women that day in the crowd begin to see these things happening, something should have rose up inside of them. They should have not only known facts, they also should allow their faith to rise up. 
See, another thing that happens many times to us as, as men and women of God is that we don't let our faith overcome our assumptions. In Acts chapter 2, verse 17, it says this, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. See, at that moment, their assumptions of either being drunk or their assumptions of just not knowing what was going on, instead of letting their faith lead them, their minds grab a hold that this may be something of God, they let their minds take them down the wrong path. Their faith should be the thing that led them, not their assumptions. See, many times what happens, instead of our faith leading the way, when we're facing something we don't understand, we allow our fears. Instead of our faith rising up and helping us to say, wait a minute, I'm not going to allow these assumptions to lead me down the wrong road. What we do is we allow our doubts and our concerns and our worries begin to come up into our thoughts and we stop believing. So I want you to hear me when I say this. This is so important. Many times you won't always even get the facts. It tells us in the Bible in John chapter 7, verse 24, stop judging by mere appearance, but instead judge correctly. You hear that? See, sometimes storms will arise in your life. Sometimes situations will come. Sometimes there will be moments that all you can see is the dark clouds in front of you and you can't see anything else. And that's where assumption breeds. That's where assumption begins to multiply. But what I have to do when I see the clouds or the storm, what I have to do when I, when I see the trials and tribulations, I don't want to let assumptions begin to come up inside of me and take control and lead me places I shouldn't go. What I do is say, wait a minute, I'm going to be led by my faith in Christ Jesus. It says in Hebrews 11, verse 1 and 2, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. See, even sometimes, can I tell you this? You don't even have the facts yet. You've got to stop and say, everything around me looks difficult. Guys, I know in the middle of this pandemic, when many are getting sick, when some have died, and when finances are right now the worst they've probably ever been, it's easy to let our assumptions rise up and say, it can't get any better. It can only get worse. But what we'll have to do is say, no, devil. I'm not going to allow that word to begin to draw me away from my Savior. I'm not going to allow that word to begin to erase my faith. I'm not going to allow that word to begin to destroy everything that I've believed to this point. That if God is for me, then who in this world could ever be against me? God is on my side. God is going to bring me through this. See, Peter, as he sees this crowd being led by assumption, stands up to address and said, first, let me deal with the facts. The facts of what you're believing is impossible. But I also understand that maybe sometimes facts aren't enough. That faith Remember, we all have the same faith here, led by the same God. And our God prophesied through Joel that this would happen. I want to conclude with this. There in Acts chapter 2, he also says, Now, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. My last thing is this. Don't assume without remembering the future. Don't assume without remembering the future the future. See, when God has spoken a word in our life and when God has prophesied in our life, many times the devil will bring things in your life to try to make you believe it's not going to happen. Whether God's prophesied that you're going to be healed, that God's prophesied that one day this is what you'll do. So many times the devil will bring assumptions to make you believe that God cannot do what God says. For the last few weeks, even last week, me and my wife talked about this, is that the promises of God are yes and 
Amen. And we hold on to those promises. See, Joel prophesied that one day this would happen. And all the time that it happened in between, some probably wondered, it is never going to take place. It's never going to happen. All forget about it. But yet, can I say this to you today? Don't let your assumptions overcome the promise of the future that God has given you. I've been through times if I ever wondered would I, well, see the promises of God come to pass. I went through difficult times where I thought that my ministry was over. I went through difficult times that I thought God could never use me. But God had made a promise and prophesied and spoke in my life. And I am seeing that fulfillment right now coming to pass in our church and in my ministry. And I thank God that I didn't give up along the way. I'll close with this. It says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 through 3, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus Christ is not from God. Can I tell you that many spirits will try to come in your life and tell you that, well, it's not going to happen. The prophecy is not going to take place. The dream will die. But listen, don't believe in that assumption. Hold on to the future that God has promised you. Today, I hope that I've helped you some when it comes to assumptions. First, remember this, before you assume, don't assume, get all the facts. Before you assume, don't just assume, live by faith. And listen, before you assume, don't assume, believe in the future that God has spoken in your life. There's some of you right now, assumptions have been running wild in your life. Today, I want to right now pray with you that you'll stop believing the assumptions and the fears and the doubts and the worries but you're going to believe in what God has spoke about your life. You're going to see the facts and believe. Hold on to your faith because God has spoken a future over you. So I want to pray for you right now. If you've been allowing assumptions and assuming the worst of the worst, I want to pray for you right now. God, I pray for all those who are watching that have allowed the power of assumption led by the enemy, the devil, to come in their life and try to draw them away from you, God. I pray right now that it be broken. That spirit of assumption and assuming be broken off their life right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And they will not live by assumptions and fear, but facts, faith, and the future that you have given them, God. I speak that over their life right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Some of you watching right now, and all your life has been assumptions because Jesus Christ has not been in your life. I want you to know today, I don't care what you've done, how many times you've done it. I don't care what, what sins you've committed. Jesus Christ died on a cross for all of our sins, past, present, and future. It doesn't matter what title has been attached to you. It doesn't matter what sin you've committed. It doesn't matter how many times you've done it. Jesus Christ today wants you to know He loves you and is blessed by you. All you have to do today to be saved and redeemed from your sins and your sadness, all you have to do today to come in a relationship with the Father is this. Admit that you're a sinner in need of God's grace and wonderful love. Believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, died on a cross for you, rose on the third day, and lives forevermore. And with your mouth, confess him, Lord, of your life, and you shall be saved. If today you would like to give your heart and life to Christ, then right here, right now, I want you to say this prayer with me. Will you bow your head? Say, Dear Jesus, I invite you into my heart and into my life. Forgive me of all my sins and all my ways. I repent and I come to you and I ask you to forgive me of all my sins and all of my past. And today I make a commitment to serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. If you said that prayer with me, I want you to know today that you've been redeemed, forgiven of all your sins, and you now are a child of God, a new creature, and a new creation in Him. One more thing before I let you go today. Again, I want to thank you all so much 
for being a blessing to this church through your giving. It is because of you that we continue to reach the loss of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Be able to feed the homeless in our community and have all the ministries and the impact that we're doing in this church. So guys, thank you for your giving. Continue to give and be a part of Compassion Church. Guys, we love you. We bless you. Again, stay on here and be a part of our children's church that is coming up next. Guys, we love you. You're, you're blessed. God bless you. Well, we just pray that uh, you have been blessed by the worship and the word today. And I want to again say thank you so much for just joining with us for our online worship experience. And if you join with us today and you gave your life to Jesus for the very first time, we want to know about that. Please, if you would, post in the comments section below. Let us know. We want to just connect with you and rejoice in your decision to follow Jesus. For those of you that are, uh, have been faithful with your giving, we can't say thank you enough. So please continue to give into the ministry of Compassion Church. If you haven't been giving and you would like to do so, you can see on the screen a couple easy ways to give. So uh, check that out. Give through those ways. Very easy way. And again, we just want to say thank you so much for your continued support. I want to remind you that we have online connect groups going on all week. Connect with one of those. An incredible way to engage and connect with other believers. So check that out this week. This month, we're going to have something called the School of Leadership. For those of you that are interested in leadership principles and leadership training, we're going to have that available for you. We'll be giving more information about that, but an exciting way to learn and grow in your leadership. Next Sunday, part three, Devil's Dictionary. It's going to be an incredible time again together. So share this uh, Facebook Live next Sunday. Share it. Invite friends to be a part of it. We just want to reach everybody we can. We love you so much. We hope you have an incredible week.